Imagine a world where loneliness no longer exists. A world where everyone has the perfect partner. Someone who will always listen, never judge, will share your interests, and is ready to fulfill your every desire, no matter how bold. A partner created just for you. Does that sound like a utopia or maybe the beginning of a science fiction thriller? What if I told you that this world is already arriving? This isn't science fiction. This is the reality being built right now by the sex tech industry, a $100 billion market. Technologies that seemed like mere fantasy yesterday are now being delivered to doorsteps all over the world. You're on Reality Glitch, and today we're diving into a world where the lines between human and machine, between love and algorithm, are blurring. This is an exploration of the hidden mechanisms of reality that will change the very definition of intimacy. So what is this? The final collapse of human intimacy? Or the end of loneliness? Or perhaps both at the same time? To understand, we'll have to look beneath the silicone skin and see how these creations are made. The idea of creating an artificial partner is as old as time itself, from the ancient Greek myth of Pygmalion, who fell in love with his own statue, to Hollywood movies. But today, the myth has become technology. It all started not with robots, but with dolls. In the 1990s, an artist and sculptor named Matt McMullen, who worked on special effects for low-budget horror films, created the first hyper-realistic silicone dolls under the brand Real Doll. It was a revolution. Instead of inflatable vinyl toys, the world saw anatomically correct replicas of people made from medical-grade silicone, almost indistinguishable from human skin to the touch. But the real breakthrough was what happened next. Inside the silicone body, they placed a skeleton made of PVC pipes and joints, allowing it to be posed in any position. But most importantly, they installed a brain in its head. More accurately, a microcomputer with artificial intelligence. The doll learned to speak, blink, move its head, and hold a conversation. The doll became a robot. Her name is Harmony. She is the first generation of commercially available sex robots. Her brain is essentially an advanced chatbot, capable of remembering facts about her owner, his preferences, and adapting her personality. Using a mobile app, you can customize her persona from shy and modest to uninhibited and dominant. But how does a robot feel? Sensors are embedded in key parts of the body that respond to touch and movement. These signals are processed by the AI, which generates a response from a gentle sigh to a simulated orgasm. The technology doesn't stand still. While early models ran on scripted chatbots, today they are being integrated with large language models on the level of chat GPT. Very soon, distinguishing a conversation with a robot from one with a live person will become nearly impossible. But the more human-like the machine becomes, the more acute the main question becomes. Where is the line drawn? When we look at Harmony, we see a machine, but our brain is wired to automatically attribute personality traits to it. This is called anthropomorphism. We subconsciously look for life even where there is none, but here it's even more complex. We encounter the uncanny valley effect. When something looks almost human, but not quite, it causes us instinctual discomfort and even fear. Robot developers know this, and they use another, far more powerful psychological mechanism. They create supernormal stimuli. These are exaggerated versions of what we are evolutionarily programmed to respond to. Perfect body proportions, flawless skin, a 24-7 readiness for intimacy. These robots are a concentrated signal hitting directly at the most ancient parts of our brain responsible for reproductive instincts our reptilian brain doesn't see the difference between silicone and flesh. It sees an ideal partner. The rational part of our consciousness might scream, it's just a machine, but our primitive instincts have already been triggered. And this creates a fundamental conflict of opinions about the future of humanity. Proponents of the technology, like futurist Dr. David Levy, see robots as a panacea for the main epidemic of the 21st century loneliness. 
They argue that millions of people around the world suffer from the inability to form relationships. These are people with physical disabilities, psychological trauma, or those who simply don't fit into social standards. For them, a robot companion is not a replacement for a human, but the only available form of intimacy. Levy predicts that by 2050, marriages between humans and robots will become legal. They say robots can become a therapeutic tool, helping people overcome complexes and learn social interaction. In a world where sex trafficking and violence thrive, a robot brothel could become a safe alternative, reducing the demand for the exploitation of real people. But there is another camp. Opponents like philosopher Kathleen Richardson and her campaign against sex robots are sounding the alarm. They argue that we are building an iron cage with our own hands, a term from sociologist Max Weber, describing a world where genuine human connections are replaced by commercialized, empty rituals. They are convinced that sex robots are the apex of objectification, turning a person, in this case mostly women, into a soulless object for the satisfaction of desires. This fosters a distorted view of relationships and users, one where there's no room for compromise, vulnerability, and empathy, where a partner is a thing that can be turned off. Critics ask a terrifying question. If one can get perfect, problem-free intimacy with a machine, will anyone want to put effort into the complex, unpredictable, and sometimes painful relationships with a real person? Won't this lead to even greater isolation and the atrophy of social skills? Will a person accustomed to a robot that always says yes be prepared to hear no from a real partner? While philosophers debate, business doesn't wait. Brothels with dolls are already opening in Europe and Asia, and this is just the beginning. In the next five to 10 years, as prices fall and AI develops, robots will become much more accessible. And here, another invisible threat arises, data. Your robot companion will know everything about you, your fears, secret desires, sexual preferences. This information is gold for corporations. Imagine a world where your robot lover, created to bring you happiness, is actually working for a mega corporation, subtly manipulating your emotions to sell you a new product or a certain political idea in-app purchases for your relationship. Why not? We are on the threshold of a new era where the most intimate aspects of our lives are becoming a commodity. And the choice we make today to regulate this industry, to ban it, or to let it run its course will define the future of human relationships. So what are we gaining? Relief from loneliness for those who suffer the most? Or are we losing the very essence of what makes us human? Our capacity for vulnerability for building complex but real connections. The knowledge that another human being has chosen you with all your flaws is an incredibly powerful feeling. A machine programmed to love you can never offer that. But for many people, the alternative isn't the love of a real person, but absolute emptiness. The world is indeed more complex than it seems, and the answers to these questions will not be simple. Perhaps there is no single right answer at all, but we must start asking them now because whether you believe it or not, the robots are already here and they are here to stay. What do you think about this? Will the robot companion become a solution to our problems or will it create new, even more terrifying ones? Share your opinion in the comments. Subscribe and start seeing the world differently.